All right. Uh, so we are live. We are on Facebook. I talked to our communications department and they are putting this Zoom on Facebook. So uh, if anyone's out there, I can't see on Facebook if anyone's out there. Um, or if people join us on Zoom, I can see you. If people are on Facebook, I can't uh, see Facebook or see questions. So hopefully. Yeah, Right, but, uh, but hello, I am the Meridian Township Clerk, Deborah Guthrie. It's National Voter Registration uh, Month, and today is National Voter Registration Day on September 28th. Our, this, these are the people, the rock stars from the clerk's office in Meridian Township. Uh, we will go clockwise from who I counterclockwise from who I can see on my screen. We've got rock star Zach Lee Master. He is the administrative assistant and he will introduce himself in a second. Uh, we have rock star Rebecca Kelly. She is in the back, but she, oh my gosh, she's a rock star with all the QBF stuff. She'll introduce herself in a second. And then we have rock star deputy clerk Robin Faust, who many of you have probably seen. She's been out in the community for ever, and she's she's been a rock star with people. So I will have everyone introduce themselves uh, briefly, and then we can take questions, and we'll talk about um, registering to vote. So I think we will start. We'll go backwards. We'll go uh, clockwise for me. We'll start with our deputy clerk, Robin Faust, if you want to introduce yourself and what you do in the Meridian Township Clerk's Office. Morning, everyone. Um, as said, she said, I'm Robin Faust, the deputy, the new deputy clerk. I uh, started in April. Uh, one of our, I've got a few main duties. The first one being the elections, of course, any questions that you have um registering making sure you're on our absent voter list any of those i can answer um another main duty for me is glendale cemetery i'm working on the administration portion of that but i've also gone out and met with people and uh at the cemetery to talk about purchasing a grave as well as the graves that they've already purchased and how things are handled um when the time is necessary, or if you currently have a loved one out there and feel that um, things are not being handled correctly, you give me a call and I will handle that. The other thing that I uh, have as a main duty is our FOIAs. We receive anywhere between 10 to 15, sometimes 20 a week of people requesting information um, that can be taken from any of our files here. We have I do not handle anything having to do with the police department. Those go over to Heidi, but all other FOIAs that come in, such as people asking about code enforcement that might have gone on your property or um, lot splits and those sort of things. Um, what might developments coming in and you want more questions about it, water sewer lines, that information comes in and I get it and turn around and send it back. But I'm here if you've got any questions on anything having to do with the clerk's office. Thank you, Robin. Rebecca? Oh, can't hear you. I mean, we may need your mic up a little bit louder. You're muted now. You were unmuted before, but we had a hard time hearing you. Let's see if. Do a test right now. Yeah. You'll need to go upstairs first because they've got to get us the, the invoice or the, the number. The, we'll have the, Robin, the, if you I'm could sorry. mute your mic because we're getting ambient sound from you and Zach, since you're out in the lobby area. If you could mute your mic. Okay, now Rebecca, let's see. Oh, still having a hard time. We're gonna move, Re we're gonna move Rebecca over to Robin. And in the meantime, we're going to hear from Zach. We've, we've, we've got a solution for everything. We got workarounds. So, all right, Zach, go ahead and introduce yourself. All right. Uh, I'm Zach Lemaster. I'm the administrative assistant here. I'm also the election technician. Uh, for the most part, uh, when we're not having an election, I work on minutes and uh, a lot of uploading on the website for anything that has to go on with the township board meetings. 
I'm also in charge of record retention here. So all the old files that go back to basically since the creation of the township, I'm uh, managing those, trying to turn them a little bit more digital uh, because, you know, paper takes up a lot of space. So that's a big project we've been working on. Um, and when we are working in elections, um, with all your tabulators, your high speed scanners, uh, your e poll books, all of those things, I've programmed those and test them and uh, just make sure everything is working the way it's supposed to do so that we can have a fair and well read election. Also, kind of with the help of everyone else, I do uh, assist in training with poll workers and just making sure you have the highest quality poll, work poll workers that you can have in your township. And that about wraps it up. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Zach. Um, and Zach has um, indexed the township board packets. So you will find them indexed on the township website. So when you go to the township website and you see the board packet, um, there will be an end index. So you can actually go to specific items on the agenda rather than having to scroll through the entire township board packet. Sometimes it can That's be 300 mind. pages, 400 pages. And so this has made it way easier for people to be able to navigate those township board packets. All right, and now we can hear from Rockstar Rebecca. <laughs> Sorry about that, <laughs> Rebecca. Thanks for moving over. Uh, you're welcome, no problem. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I am Rebecca Lemley Kelly. <laughs> you might see me on the website as under Lemley, but uh, I've been doing records management for um, voters and in our jurisdiction for five years here. And then prior to that, I worked for the city of Mason for three years. But I deal with all of the daily changes that we get. Uh, we get changes from the secretary of state when you update your driver's licenses with change of addresses, get changes from other jurisdictions with voter changes moving into Meridian Township. We also, um, take emails and different things like that. So it's, it's very helpful if you help us work with you to make sure that you can get your uh, absentee ballots or voter information that election materials that we're sending you when it's that time. Uh, and also, as far as elections, I'm also very actively involved in our elections here in Meridian Township. So I hope to hear from you with changes and hope things are going well for every one of you in Meridian Township. Thank you, Rebecca. And then of course, I'm the township clerk. I am, uh, we are a chartered township. And so the township clerk is an elected position in Meridian Township. There are some communities where the um, uh, township clerk is not an elected position like our neighbor in East Lansing that is an appointed position. Um, so we do have uh, the township treasurer and the township clerk both have dual role, roles in that they are a department director um, overseeing a department and they are a voting member on the township board. And so, um, so that those are two of the roles that I play here at Meridian Township. All of us are um, uh, can do, I don't know why the word is escaping me, so I'm going to grab my little book here. Um, all of us are notaries, and so if you need a notary, you can come here to Meridian Township. All four of us are notaries. We have other notaries at Meridian Township as well, but typically you will find, uh, you will find someone in the uh, clerk's office who can help you um, with uh, any documents that you need notarized. Um, one of the other things that we do in our department is um, we swear all of the police officers in, we swear all of the firefighters in, and any of the um, public servants, whether they're elected or appointed in Marion Township, uh, we swear all of them in as well. And so they all also take an oath of conduct uh, to be professional, uh, to treat people with respect and dignity, to be inclusive, uh, and we take those oaths as well. We also have our election inspectors uh, do that, and we have election inspector applications uh, available here in the, in the township, and they're also available on the Secretary of State website. 
So if you would like to work with our lovely group here, uh, uh, we would love to have uh, you fill out an election inspector application and submit it to the township. You can drop it off. You can fill it, you can print it, fill it out. You can fill it out online. You can send it via email. You can send it via snail mail. We're at 5151 Marsh Road, Okemos, Michigan 48864. If you would like, you do not have to live in the township to be an election inspector. You can live outside the township if you wanna be an election inspector and work with us. And uh, it's, it's really quite a good service to give back to the community. You do get paid hourly for that. We are looking for election inspectors who um, do have other languages than English that they speak because we are looking um, we are looking for that. So you know we'd love to have you fill out an election inspector application. We don't have an election coming up this November. So we do not have an election in November 2021. I think that's one of our frequently most asked questions you would agree is, do we have an election this November? No, we do not have an election in November 2021. Uh, the, there was a marijuana petition that went around and a lot of people call our office asking if that marijuana uh, petition is going to be on the ballot this November. It is not. On August 26th, the Meridian Township Board voted to have that petition on the ballot in the next regular election, which is August 2022. So if you're wondering, uh, there was a petition that circulated. Our office did certify all of the signatures. That's one of the duties of our office is to certify is to verify uh, signatures. And so we verified the signatures on the petition. There were enough signatures. Um, and then the county clerk's office uh, recommended that that petition go on the next regular election, which is in August. So if you're wondering if you someone who signed that petition or if you circulated that petition and uh, you're wondering when it will be on the ballot, that will be uh, the next regular election, which is August 2022. So that's another frequently asked question that we have. Do you have an election in November 2021? No. When is the marijuana, uh, recreational marijuana question going to be on the ballot? August 2022. So that's the second frequently asked question. The third frequently asked question we've been getting lately is in regards to um, uh, mailers that people have been receiving at their home about voter registration. There are, there are a number of organizations out, um, out there and there are a number of uh, political groups out there who will be sending information to people's homes. Sometimes it looks like it's from the clerk's office. Sometimes you can tell it's from a different organization or a political party. Uh, they are trying to reach out to as many people as possible to get people to register to vote and to get people to register to vote according to their political party. And so it's not illegal. It's not a scam. Um, you can, if, you've, if you're unsure, you can call our office. We can, we can answer any questions for you. But with, next, with 2022 being a big Michigan gubernatorial uh, race. Um, next year, we will be having um, a lot of a lot of people um, uh, in organizations and political parties looking to get people uh, uh, to register to vote. So, so that is one of the big questions we get um, is about that. Another big question we get is about uh, absentee ballots. And so the process for absentee ballots is if you wanna be put on the permanent absentee list, we do have uh, ballot applications here in our office and you can pick up one of these if you wanna be on the permanent absentee list. Um, we can put you on that list. You can contact us via email or you can, um, or you can go online to the Secretary of State website and you can ask to be put on the permanent absentee list. And so I'm gonna show you 
if I can share my screen appropriately here to try to find can can you nod if you can see the Secretary of State website and not my email? <laughs> okay. All right. So this is a Secretary of State uh, voter registration website. It is register vote. You can put in Michigan Voter Information Center. You can put in Michigan register to vote. And they have a number of keywords that you can use to look up the uh, state of Michigan website and to register to vote online. So since today is National Voter Registration Day, you can go on here to um, check your voter registration status, to check your address, to make sure that um, your address is updated so that you are uh, uh, voting and so that you are all vote ready to vote in their correct uh, polling location once we do have an election. Um, so everything can be done online. It's really super user friendly. If you need assistance, by all means, you can contact our office and we can help you. Our phone number is 517-853-4300 is our main line. You can call me anytime. My direct line is 517-853-4324. Um, and any one of us can assist you. Uh, I'm gonna ask Rebecca if there's any, so Rebecca oversees our qualified voter file system and we have 33,000, uh, around 33,000 registered voters in Meridian Township and we have around 19,000 absentee ballot, uh, absent uh, uh, voters on our permanent absentee ballot list. And so when you are on that permanent absentee ballot list, it does not mean that you automatically get a ballot when there is an election. It means that when there's an election, you will automatically receive an absentee ballot application. And when you receive that absentee ballot application, you need to, if you want to vote absentee, you need to fill it out and send it back to our office in order to get an absentee ballot. And I'll have Rebecca talk about why that is, um, you know, it's part of the integrity and the security of elections and what we do on our end once we receive that. So I don't mean to put you on the spot, Rebecca, but I, uh, but I know you're, <laughs> you're a guru. And so I don't want to be the only one talking on here. So I'm going to try to include everyone. <laughs> no, that's all right. Um, we have to verify well, the reason for the not the automatic ballot is because of voters change their address a lot. Uh, you may be temporarily away. Most times we have a lot of our absent voter ballot requests uh, go out of state. So the application helps us to pinpoint exactly where you would like your ballot mailed to. And at that time, we also confirm and verify signatures and we we do realize that voters signatures change we do all that we can to make sure that it's a smooth transition from the time the ballot leaves our office by the time we receive the application to request the ballot and the time that you receive the ballot uh, many times we have mail returned to us because by law election mail cannot be forwarded if there's an address problem so then that comes back to our office and then we do our due diligence to try and find you, the voter, and where you might be at that current time that the ballot is coming to you. So we also um, will contact you by email or phone if you've given that to us. Otherwise, it's kind of a shot in the dark uh, and we'll try and send you out something again in the mail. So we uh, really work hard at protecting the integrity for you to vote absentee. All right. Does that answer some of the questions, Clerk Guthrie? <laughs> yes, and then since we still have your camera on in the back there, I see- Yes, it. I see, I was gonna point that out. <laughs> I see a stack of pink postcards and yes. I see a cabinet back there. If you yes. could talk about ways in which we notify voters and uh, 
and that cabinet what's <laughs> back there in that cabinet? i know there's some important there's some important stuff that we keep locked up <laughs> yes yes that's very true um the database that we use is called the qualified voter file or qvf to us and that's a shared database with the state of michigan so when you have a driver's license change a driver's license update we get that information uh, daily from the secretary of state and then in turn if you notice the pink cards that clerk guthrie referred to on the table in the forefront those are uh, cards that i send out when i get a, a notice of a change of address via the post office or via the secretary of state and then we manually uh, mail those out and wait for them to come back so we can keep our database updated and the big rolodex file in the back that you may be looking at and notice in, in the background that is a hard copy which we refer to as a master card uh, on each voter in meridian township which comes from the database called qvf and those are constantly being updated and changed daily um, and it could be anywhere from 50 to 200 changes a day here in our office that we deal with so uh, we are doing our best to try and keep up we get notices from the county clerk uh different changes on voters the county you know, clerk also those are those changes are if people move if people move within Meridian Township there needs to be a change uh for the voter if people move outside of the jurisdiction mm -hmm. there is a change if people move inside the jurisdiction there's a change yes if people change their name there's a change <laughs> um if there if someone is deceased there's a change yes. my uh, military uh status there's yes Mar change. marital status marital status am i missing any changes those are uh, most, those are most uh, of the those are most of the changes and then if you've been out of the voting cycle for for general elections and haven't voted then we get a change from the bureau of election through the state of Michigan that you have not been actively participating and, and they do their best to try and find you and then notify us also. So we had um, uh, the 2020 uh, census <laughs> came out showing there was 11, an 11% increase in population in Meridian Township, which I think was about 4,000 people Yes. And uh, the voter information in Meridian Township has drastically changed in regards to uh, absentee uh, voters and registered voters. So in 2010, um, if we're looking at a 10 year change like the census does, in 2010, we had around just under 28,000 registered voters in 2010 and in 2020 in the general election we had thir almost 34,000 mm -hmm. registered voters which was a 22 percent increase in registered voters in Meridian Township and we have around 44,000 uh, people in Meridian Township and then our permanent absentee uh, uh, list drastically changed. We had in 2010, we had 2000, we almost had 2200 people on the permanent absentee list in 2010. And in 2020, for the general election in November, we had just over 20,000 people. So we had an increase of 18,000 people on um, the permanent absentee ballot list. Um, and every permanent absentee ballot that we send out, let's see, how many did we send out and um, how many did, how many were returned? Do you remember how many were returned? In, was it, was it close to 20,000? I think close to, I think close to 20,000 absentee ballots were returned in, in uh, the general election in 2020. So yes, and every yes. single one of them has to be verified. 
Yes. Every signature has to be verified. Every application that comes in is verified. The signature is verified. The address is verified. We scan it. Um, we timestamp it to show that we received it. We okay. input it into the system. Um, we have we put the absentee ballot um, together. So the absentee ballot, when we before we send it out, it gets put into a secrecy sleeve, and then that goes inside an envelope, um, a return envelope, and then that goes inside a mailing envelope. And there's a instruction sheet that goes inside of that, and a I voted sticker that goes inside of that. So when people return it. Um, they get their I voted sticker. So even if you don't go to the poll, if you vote absentee from home, mm -hmm. you'll still have an I voted sticker. Um, and so all of that is processed. And when the absentee ballot is returned, those are also, um, we verify the signature um, on the outside of the absentee ballot. And those mm -hmm. cannot be opened as of today. Who knows what laws will change um, until election day when we can process those. Does that pretty much sum it up? Rebecca. It does. And, and, it, and then to clarify, the signature that we have on file in the qualified voter file, the database that's used by the Secretary of State, is the signature that you have on your driver's license. So that's what we match it to. And we do know that sometimes health issues affect your signature. And we do our due diligence to contact you and find out what's happened if there's a change. And, and we work with those little caveats also. Okay. All right. And then Rebe Rebecca also works with election inspectors. We have uh, probably in a big election, we have almost 200 election workers and Rebecca, Robin, and Zach and myself, we all work with election inspectors. Um, and Re Rebecca works closely with them on processing the absentee uh, ballots and absentee ballot applications and keeping the voter uh, file uh, up to date and all of that kind of stuff and, Re and Rebecca oversees all of that. And I don't know if Robin is still in the room. She is. Um, I just want to make one last comment. Uh, yeah. Clerk, if that's okay. Yep. Um, as far as an age limit for a uh, election workers, you can be 16 years of age, and we would love to uh, get more of that age group in and start helping you learn more about the election process. So uh, in the future, you could be doing the things that we're doing. So hold on. All right, good point. Thank Our you. Deputy Clerk. One of the things um, that Robin and I are working on closely is uh, the polling locations. And with the, I probably should have kept Rebecca on a little bit longer, but with the um, redistricting that's going to be happening next year um, and the okay. county mm -hmm. apportionment that's going to be going on next year, there will be a lot of changes to voter information. So you can expect information from our office um, possibly on any changes for where you where your new voting district will be, or if you um, have uh, who your county commissioner um, will be, if that changes at the county level, because the county does and clerk Barb Byram oversees the county apportionment for county commissioners, and so if that changes at all that information will come to you. If you don't have a change in that information, you won't be receiving that. Um, but with the, with the state apportionment that's going on, we, we are going to assume that most voters will be um, having some sort of change uh, notification. And one of the items that uh, Deputy Clerk uh, Robin Faust and myself are working on is a change in polling locations because uh, for our two school districts, uh, rightfully so, our two school districts would like to move the uh, polling locations out of the elementary schools and out of the schools. Obviously, um, with the safety of the of children at the forefront of their minds, um, to to get the polling locations out of there, so we're not having you know adults coming 
in and out of the school all day long um, while our children are there at school and having those move to different locations. So Robin, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about that and, and one of the last uh, places that we went to that we're looking at and um, possibly the importance of uh, uh, accessibility and how we've been looking at that this year as well. And if there's anyone out in the audience that has comments or questions, you know, feel free to put it in the in the chat or raise your hand. And um, I'm going to stop sharing your screen so you can actually um, see what we're talking about. So Rebecca, this is Rebecca's, you can see Rebecca, Rebecca's office back there, those pink slips. She was talking about pink slips, those pink postcards she was talking about, and that cabinet in the back that she was talking about where we keep our master card. So we keep all of this locked up in, in Meridian Township in a safe location. But if you have a question, if you want to put it in the chat, or if you want to raise your hand, you know, we're happy to answer anything. But Robin, if you want to talk a little bit about um, polling locations and accessibility at those locations, that'd be fantastic. No problem. Thank you. Um, currently, um, in anticipation of what we thought would be the November election, we were out in the township um, looking at alternative locations, especially near the elementary schools. Um, one of the um, agreements that we're working on right now that I'm very excited about is moving the uh, central elementary school location, voting location, over to the Okemos Library. We looked at the library, there's plenty of parking. There's enough close by for anyone with a handicapped um, vehicle that needs to be closer to the door. There's wide doors to go in. There's plenty of room for many voters to go in and vote and be able to both access and, and exit without you know, running into anyone. Um, besides that location, we also have to look to make sure it's good for the inspector, that we have a room for them to go and take breaks in, that the bathrooms are close by and handicap accessible as well as hopefully a little kitchen. And that's one of the things that is available there at the Okemos Library. And we're really excited about entering into an agreement with them. Um, another location that we currently went to was Faith Lutheran Church, if I'm, I think that's what it was called. And that's the possibility of moving Cornell Road, School. Dobe Road. Do, uh, right there on Dobe Road. And we're gonna yep. move um, Cornell and what was the other one? Edge, um, Edgewood. Edgewood. Edgewood Montessori to that site. There is two levels. Again, we had to look at handicap accessibility. There's plenty of doors. There's, because we're going to use two floors, there is an elevator. There's bathrooms on both floors. There's a kitchenette on both floors. And plenty of accessibility, both in entering and exiting the building and the voting location. And there's plenty of room for our inspectors as well. We need to take their comfort into consideration at a site. Um, we are still looking at alternatives. We've got a couple other sites that we wanna make sure are handicap accessible in the future, such as up in the Northern Western portion of the township where we have Snell Tower. Um, that location is wonderful in that neighborhood. We'd hate to lose that, but we have had some issues regarding accessibility in that site. So if anyone has an idea of a good location up there in the northwestern portion of the township, we'd love to hear it. Yep, and we also met with uh, Superintendent Steve Cook and to look at uh, different alternative locations for the high school and the middle school. Correct. And look, looking at um, the Hazlitt, Hazlitt community ad right there connected to the Hazlitt library and being in the gym. And that also has excellent um, uh, accessibility access and, um, uh, and accommodations for election workers and for anyone who's coming in to vote as well. Correct. And then the other location we're looking at is Bennett Woods. There's a ton of Hiawatha and Bennett Woods are really Bennett Woods. Those elementary schools are the are some of the toughest 
um, in regards to uh, voters coming in while children are at school and not being able to separate them. And so we are looking at um, moving uh, that polling location basically right across the street at uh, 242 Church. Um, and uh, they have lovely accommodations. They're ever, everyone's really fantastic to work with, the schools, um, people at all of these facilities. And so uh, Deputy Clerk Robin Faust and myself are looking at that location as well. Did I miss, did we miss any locations? I think we mentioned them all. The other one we haven't really looked at an alternative yet is Murphy Elementary School. Uh, that's that, that one and Snell Tower are probably the two toughest ones to find a, a walkable uh, uh, alternative location. So, yeah. That's why we'd love to have everybody's help in offering an alternative for those two areas. I know that um, it might be a drive, but there is New Hope Church that's out there on um, Saginaw, used to be old M78. Um, we have um, their facility and we've used it as one of the polling locations and the possibility of combining another polling location with them. But we would like to keep them in the neighborhood to try to make them walkable if possible. But that's not always our you know, goal. We have to make sure that we meet the other goals such as you know, the accessibility is a huge issue to meet. And that's our prime thing when, once we move them out of the schools. Yeah. And then we also have, um, I have Zach talk a little bit about our, uh, the access, accessible voting equipment that's available at the polls and uh, the testing process. But Zach also helped set up um, in a, I'm sorry, hold on. <laughs> Oops, <laughs> sorry. Um, Zach also worked with Deputy Clerk Rod and Faust in setting up the ability for people to uh, do curbside voter registration. And we did curbside voter registration last week and we have curbside voting on election day. So I'm gonna have Zach talk uh, about uh, the accessibility, the voter accessibility. <laughs> Um, on election day and part of the testing process that he goes through with the VAT machine and what the VAT machine is and all that kind of stuff. Go ahead, Zach. Yeah, I do program and uh, test the uh, VATs, voter assist terminals. Uh, you know, it's really important that everyone is able to vote uh, no matter what. Uh, so I go through it. I set every single one of these machines up and you know, I put on the headphones, I uh, use the, the remotes that everyone has to use, and I use all the different cards, make sure all the cards to, are programmed correctly for the poll work that gets in there. And then I will go through and I'll go through every single option on that ballot, uh, every sub option, make sure that the audio works clearly on every one of them, that every button will work, will interact with the uh, digital menu the way that it's supposed to. You know, if I like press a, if I press the down arrow on this button, this remote control that I have, it'll go down and it will go to the, the go to whichever choice is, uh, you know, whatever you are, let's say you're on the president and go down and it will say Democrat and then it will say the candidate's name. If anything sounds wrong and it has, I have caught that before, you know, it does happen uh, where it'll just mispronounce someone's name or sometimes I've caught it where like the name was swapped with someone else's name. Uh, sometimes these things happen, you know, but that's why we have people like me and other like the people as well that uh, go through and just make sure that these things are working correctly. Um, and I do this for every single precinct. Uh, you know, it's not just one machine because every machine could have something else wrong with it. Um, so, yeah, and we do the much. we do the VAT testing according to state law. We meet that requirement, yeah. and and um, and we do that live. And home TV helps us out so that we can do that live, so people can see that process, and we invite the public to that to that uh, process as well. 
Yeah, we have a public accuracy test usually just a couple of weeks before the election where everyone can show up and kind of just uh, watch us test out the different machines that we have available to vote on. Yep, yep. And then um, we will also have uh, a voter assist terminal set up here in Meridian Township Hall um, in advance of the election if anybody wants to come and um, check it out and see how it works and, and that kind of thing. Um, and then I don't know if you want to talk about the curbside uh, voting at all. Oh, sure. Yeah, uh, sometimes you might see a, a sign up out by the parking lot when you pull up, it'll have a number on it. And if you want, you can just call that number and someone will come out there with a voter application and we'll just have you fill out the parking as a fill out the form right in your car in the parking lot and we'll take it back inside for you. So very nice, uh, unique little experience that people should take advantage of. Yep. All right, and then we have, uh, I wanted to share, I'll share my screen one more time. Um, can you see the register to vote? All right, so uh, this is our communications department created this. We have this here in the township hall and I guess we'll probably after when September's over, we'll probably have to have this changed up a bit to take off National Voter Registration Month, but this is in the township hall and Robin and I are gonna be working on uh, with some local businesses to see if they're willing to have this up um, at their location where people can just scan this QR code with their cell phone and register to vote, uh, check their voter registration status and any other uh, information on there. And here is my contact information. If you would like to jot that down, screen, uh, Shot it, is, is that how you say it? Screenshot it, screen, is that correct? Take a screenshot. <laughs> um, that's my information if you wanna contact me here at the office if you have any questions. And if I don't know something, I'll say I don't know and I will get you to the right, to the right person. Um, I, don't, I, don't have a, I don't have a problem with admitting if I don't know something. Um, we have a ton of experts here in the office. Um, uh, I was sworn in on November 20th, 2020. So obviously Re Rebecca is much more of a guru than I am at most things. And uh, Robin's been with the township for what, 40, 30 years? She's a guru. Zach's been doing elections for, although you just came to the township, you've been uh, working yes. with the city of Lansing. Actually, six years, I've been doing elections for now. Six years, so I'm basically surrounded by geniuses is what this amounts to. Um, and I work with a fantastic group. And if I'm not able to answer your question, I will send it along to um, someone, someone who's able to answer your question. So there's my information. There is uh, the QR code if you wanna scan it at all. I know home TV and the communications department, they're recording this Zoom. And so I know that they'll be replaying it. So I'm just kind of hanging this up here for a little bit um, to give you time to scan that if you want to and check your uh, voter registration status. Is there anything um, uh, from the team here in the clerk's office that I missed that you want to touch on? Um, or add to? Yeah, you probably already said it, but just to re hit on it, um, if you're not already signed up for the absentee mailing list, uh, please come on in and we'll get you signed up for it as soon as possible. Uh, I know I might not speak for everyone, but I think it's way easier to vote absentee and uh, it just helps us out as well. It keeps everything localized, makes everything easier for us to deal with as well. And that's all. Yes, the earlier people fill out, um, to be on the permanent absentee list, the better. And, so, and if you do vote absentee and send your absentee ballot in, please do not wait until the last day. There's quite a bit of processing and verification um, that we go through that we go through to secure the integrity of your vote. And so 
having most of, if we have 19,000 voters on the absentee, permanent absentee list, and all 19,000 actually vote permanent absentee, which I think our rate is uh, like 90 per 75 to 90 percent on average of people um, who are on that list vote, actually voting absentee. It's a pretty large number. Um, and most of you wait until the last few days. It is quite a bit of work on our end at the last minute. And so um, your absentee ballots are sent out to you 45 days in advance. And when you receive them, not that I'm rushing you to vote because I'm not, just please don't wait until, until the last minute because uh, you know we don't, we don't want everyone here burning the midnight oil 16 hours a day to process everything. So we'd appreciate it if they were dropped off, you know, a little bit before election day. <laughs> So any, anything um, else anyone else wants to add? Yes. Uh, uh, we wanted to let you know that, you know, when, when the election comes and you do get your application in the mail, you don't necessarily have to vote absent voter Correct. ballot. You can also choose at that time not to and go to the polls. We Correct. only send you a ballot if you sign the form and send it back to us. Yep. And, and the other thing is we have had a number of calls and I know Clerk Guthrie's already touched on it that, that there's at least three other groups that have sent out information and you are wondering about your vote, your whether or not you're registered to vote or not. Please don't you know, hesitate to call us or stop by the office, but please don't worry that there is something wrong because there probably is not. Mm -hmm. But it never hurts to check. There's a okay. chat. All right. And there's someone in chat for you. Yes, thank you, Anne, for joining us. We really appreciate it. Um, and we appreciate you being with us and anyone else who's out there. And uh, like uh, Robin said and everyone else said, if you have any questions, feel free to call us. Our direct line is 517-853-4300. My direct line is 517-853-4324. My email address is guthrie at meridian.mi.us. We have a fantastic website. So if you need to look up any of our information and what our contact information is, it's on the township website under departments. You can go to the clerk's office. You can find us there and email any one of us. And we're happy to help you out. All right. Thank you for joining us today on National Voter Registration Day. Robin has one last point to make. Actually, it's Rebecca. Oh, Rebecca has one last point to make. If you have um, family members who are military or overseas citizens, they may also vote and we can take care of them. There's an application, a federal application, or you can contact our office for that information. And one thing that's kind of a misunderstanding is the application is good for that year only. Every year they have to re-up and sign a new application. But I just wanted to bring that to your attention. If you have family members who are military or overseas, there's accessibility for them also. Thank and you, then that's that, a very good point. And then the accessibility ballot for those who um, have uh, maybe an issue with reading things, there's there's all many forms that we can help you with through our office. Just please contact our clerk or one of us personally will help you. Yes, good point. And since my son, since my son did just switch from the Marines to the Army and is now on base, um, that's a very good point that you made. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's part of being part of a military family. So, all right. Thank you so much for joining us on National Voter Registration Day. We appreciate it. And please feel free to reach out if you need to. Thank you.